Africa is home to most of the world's available untapped resources. The continent has also recently seen a growth shift, which has propelled the economy and still continues to drive change in the positive financial axis, and the continent doesn't seem to be slowing down any time, as estimates project its GDP to be well over $29 trillion by 2050. It's safe to say that the future of Africa is bright and there's no stopping us now. The 21st century would belong to Africa as the rest of the world would have a front row seat as this continent makes all the moves. Africa has the largest youth population than any continent in the world, in an area where service providers thrive instead of already established business oligarchs. The entire world unlocked by fast and cheap connectivity with thousands of opportunities for the development every second in the global village. That has become our world. Africa is now in prime position to be a key player in the fourth industrial revolution, as everything from the way we practice business to healthcare and education is being transformed by technology. Now all these have made a path for Africa to take the world by storm, but then there is still a boatload of work to be done and Africa's potential cannot be fully on the loot. One sector that promises to be an area of special interest and high value economic reward is energy. Even though the vast majority of Africa's power is still gotten from coal today, many Africans and young entrepreneurs see the potential in the renewables as the key to unlocking Africa's caged energy sector that is overly dependent on coal and crude oil. As the entire world continues to strive to reduce its carbon footprint and explore sources of energy that we can turn into power as efficiently and cleanly as possible, it turns out that we may have undervalued the number one resource available to us, the sun. Solar energy is by far the largest, most reliable source of energy available all around the world, and yet we are not using it to our full potential. Researchers imagine it might be possible to transform the world's largest desert, the Sahara, into a giant solar farm capable of meeting four times the world's current energy demand. Blueprints have been drawn up for projects in Tunisia and Morocco that would supply electricity for millions of households in Europe. Exploration of renewable energy is rapidly gaining accreditation, ever so firmly to the extent of their conception of an impressively audacious feat by scientists. To garnish the blazing hot Saharan desert, with a stream of solar panels to tap into the God-given infinite energy. As a matter of fact, the 10 largest solar facilities in the world are all located in desert and dry regions. The Sahara Desert is being touted as a targeted desert should all these theories materialize. Perhaps rightly so, as it is the largest desert in the world. It spans across 10 different countries in 3 different time zones. Its massive size would rank it fifth in the world had it been a country, as its boundaries make it bigger than Brazil, yet slightly smaller than the US and China. The annual sunshine hours of the world map shows that although there are notable hotspots across the world, such as North America, South America and Southern Africa, however, the Sahara Desert has by far the highest sunlight in the world and gets absolutely massacred by sunlight throughout the day. This can be attributed to the fact that it's much directly under the Tropic of Cancer, which means the sunshine falls most of the year directly over it and also clouds never form or even exist over the entire desert. This means that all that sunlight is almost never interrupted, making the Zahara Desert the best place in the world to develop solar farms. This then brings the most asked question of what exactly might happen if we cover the entire desert with panels. What amount of solar energy would be able to produce? And how would this affect our planet? Well, on paper, the Sahara Desert has the potential to be a global renewable energy powerhouse, capable of supplying energy in excess of 2,000 times greater than the world's global energy sources output, whose output does not extend 1,000 gigawatt hours annually. Currently, technologies have been proposed as viable production mediums. These are concentrated solar power and standard sold everyday solar panels. As any with any machine or technology, these energy generating solutions have their pros and cons. 
Concentrated solar power is designed to focus the sun's energy into specific spots or receptors using lenses and mirrors. Fashioned with intrinsic qualities, optimized to function ideally in constant sunny and hot weather. Heat received is converted into mechanical energy with the aid of steam turbines and finally to electrical energy. And then large amounts of energy are harnessed even in molten salt farm, permitting the uninterrupted generation of electricity even at night. Morocco is currently home to the world's largest concentration of solar power plants, having invested nearly $3 billion in a new power project, with an estimated capacity of 510 megawatts located on a 60 by 180 hectares of land. Other neighboring countries such as Algeria and Tunisia have also outlined multi-billion dollar concentrated solar power plants, the projects with several contracts awarded or in the tendering phase. Although necessary as the standard means for CSP solar power generation, the mode of operations of the steam turbines is generally a complex technology. Also, lenses and mirrors implemented require regular washing and cleaning with water to remove dust and impurities produced by sandstorms, amongst others. In October 2018, IRENA or International Renewable Energy Agency declared that by 2030, Egypt can use renewable energy to supply 53% of its electricity needs. Depending on the weather, both technologies may require some water to clean the mirrors and panels, making water an important factor to consider. Thus, many experts have flirted with the potential of combining the two main technologies to create a hybrid system. As tantalizing as these theoretical rationals may seem, the physical transcendence of the Sahara Desert into a massive continental and global solar power would obligate the need to overcome dominant political, regulatory, environmental, and technological hurdles. First of all, the possibility of reaching a united front with regards to legislation and policies might prove difficult, especially as the Sahara is home to a number of nations. This notion has forced researchers to conduct several feasibility studies on the global impact of what solar parks sprawled across the Sahara Desert would administer. Black surfaces are potent with absorbing light, which is apparently portrayed by the highly absorptive black surface of the solar panels. These surfaces are adaptations that enhance the efficiency of the solar panels. Although only a meager 15% of the energy received is converted to electricity, excess energy is allowed back into the atmosphere, consequently heating the atmosphere and contributing significantly to an alteration in climate in the thinly populated barren desert. These installations would have had little and no significance if the effects were felt domestically. Yet for successful energy generation, the configuration ought to expand landmass spanning thousands of square kilometers. Air circulation in the atmosphere from an area of this size would breeze re-emitted heat across the area, the continent and the entire planet, causing threatening consequences on the environment. In summary, large-scale solar projects across the Saharan Desert have the potential to power entire countries and continents in theory, yet reality proposes significant obstacles to overcome. However, with the fast pace at which new technologies are being developed in recent years, it's just only a matter of time to see how the Sahara Desert can power the entire world. If you enjoyed this video and you want to keep getting more information about African enterprises, finance, business, investment, and entrepreneurship, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be part of our family here at Think Rich Africa. Also, don't forget to leave a like and comment down below in what you think we should cover next on the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.